Thank you all for gathering here this wonderful day to celebrate uh, the legacy and the life of Dr. Martin Luther King and to support the city of Tempe's 26th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Diversity Awards. My name is Hugo Tapia, and I have the honor to be the chair of the Human Relations Commission. At this time, Sandra Bassett will sing Lift Every Voice, the Black National Anthem. <laughs> I would now like to welcome Indigenous Enterprise to the stage to honor the original stewards of the land in which modern day Tempe occupies. Community building is rooted in gathering and sharing pieces of our cultures. We are grateful to all of these local artists, including us in their art today. I would like to introduce our video honoring our theme, It Starts With Me. Hate for hate only intensifies the existence of hate and evil in the universe. 
Somewhere somebody must have a little sense, and that's the strong person. The strong person is the person who can cut off the chain of hate, the chain of evil, and you do that by love. It starts with me. 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 Empieza conmigo. It starts with me. 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 It starts with us. Together, we can end hate. This day, this event, this 26-year tradition is a vitally important celebration and may be even more vital in the political and social environment in which we find ourselves today. For we stand here together, unified as a community of neighbors, families, and friends. We do so in recognition of the great works of leaders like Dr. King, whose tireless dedication and love, love for our fellow human beings, brought forth the most sweeping and powerful social reform in the history of our nation. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mayor Corey Woods. He was elected to Tempe City Council first in 2008 and served until 2016. In 2020, he was elected mayor. Mayor Woods was named a next-gen trailblazer by the NAACP last year and 20, 2000, 2022 Advocate of the Year by the Arizona Housing Coalition for his advocacy work the expanding affordable and workforce housing opportunities. He's also a member of the mayors and CEOs for U.S. Housing Investment Coalition. Please welcome Mayor Woods. So good morning and just thank you for the opportunity to speak with you about this morning, about Tempe's continuous improvements to make this community a more welcoming and inclusive place. The Human Relations Commission finds ways each year to ensure that our community moves in the right direction. Thank you to each and every member of the HRC for serving. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Some of the accomplishments that I'll speak about this morning come directly from their conversations with our staff, including the work to rename some of our parks and our streets. Some of the original names had ties to a 1920s chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. As a result of the HRC and the renaming committee, this year we have hung new street and new park signs. I was delighted to be part of the changing of the signs along Romo Jones Street. The post office now delivers mail to East Obregon Street, and every time I come to Tempe City Hall, I walk past MLK Ragsdale Park. We're working on replacing the big monument signs, too. I can't wait, and I'm sure each and every one of you feels the same way, to see the unveiling of that sign at Michelle Brooks Tatras Park. Choosing to honor Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans from Tempe's history is more than just recognizing people. And it's more than sharing a more accurate, more complete story. Without dealing with our unjust past, we can't have an equitable future. Our Public Safety Advisory Task Force had recommended changes to make our city safer for everyone. This year, we have added 16 park rangers to patrol our parks. 
These unarmed rangers can make contact with those who need help, call our homeless outreach team or our police if needed, or just have conversations with people. We are also installing video cameras in some of our parks that can connect to our real-time operations center, which will debut this February. This will give us more information when we respond to calls for service, help us see what is needed to make safer spaces for everyone, and also help solve crimes. We're also working on phase three of the ADA transition plan, which improves facilities, parks, and streets for those with disabilities. But making life easier for one person makes it easier for all people, whether you're a mom with a stroller or someone who uses a wheelchair. People in Tempe are interested in understanding more about how disabilities affect everyone. Each year, our library picks a book and gives away copies so our whole community can have a shared reading experience. In October, our pick was Disability Visibility. We actually ran out of the 1,200 copies that we initially made available. Everyone in our community deserves to have a safe place to live. We focused a significant amount of time and money to help people find and afford housing. We just recently as a council unanimously added source of income protection to the Fair Housing Act non-discrimination ordinance. This was to make sure so that for anyone who uses government assistance to pay rent, that they cannot be discriminated against. If you could afford the rent, you should be able to live wherever you want. <laughs> Affordable housing is also a key issue for equity. Our Hometown for All program was designed to create housing for everyone in our city. This past October, it was recognized as a leading program for diversity, equity, and inclusion by the National League of Cities. Just look at the successes we've shown in just two years. This was a critically important initiative that the council and I started back in January of 2021, because the perspective was we were not going to be a city that got up and talked about affordable housing without creating an actual sustained revenue stream. And Tempe residents noted that this was a top concern in this year's community survey. Homelessness also disproportionately affects black men and women. Getting people off the street and into shelter is an equity issue as well as a health and safety concern. The death rate for those who are unsheltered is 10 times higher. And unhoused people on average die 12 years earlier. Drug overdoses, traffic accidents, violence, and heat exhaustion are the primary causes of death. We can do better. The city of Tempe spends $5 million annually on programs and services. Recently, we purchased a 40-room motel as a temporary shelter. We're currently working on buying another, and I really wish I could tell you about it right now, but there's some things I gotta keep to myself for the time being. Our program, though, is already showing huge success. The most recent census of the city's unhoused population shows we've reduced homelessness in Tempe by over 30%. With our collective efforts, we've helped get over 1,200 people off of the streets. Affordable housing, community policing, homelessness, Tempe has a history of tackling big national challenges like these. We have the heart to take on tasks that most cities our size would just simply shy away from. But in Tempe, we don't wait for some other city to come along and solve our issues. We roll up our sleeves and we get started. And that's many times where conflict can come in. Racists win when we are busy arguing with each other about how to fix the most systemic problems rather than finding solutions together. We have to be ready to choose love, empathy, and compromise over hate, intolerance, and hostility, even when we disagree. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. King said, we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. He also said something that's very important to me, which is that unity has never meant uniformity. Together, we can make a better Tempe, but we cannot ignore that there are threats to our good city. This year, our police department responded to 22 hate crimes in Tempe, and there were probably more that went unreported. I want to talk about some of these crimes and how we as a city reacted. Almost a year ago, teenagers put up a for sale sign covered in threatening racial slurs in front of a multiracial household. They were arrested and charged. <laughs> Brick Road Coffee received a bomb threat on the day that they were hosting a drag story hour, possibly from a hate group that was protesting the event. The next day, Tempe residents came out in force to buy coffee and sweets to show their support. Their friend of Dorothy's book club has grown so big that it now has to be hosted at the Tempe Public Library because there isn't enough room at the coffee shop. But incidentally, Brick Road Coffee won one of our MLK Diversity Awards just last year. Last year, we also planned our first pride party with the Downtown Tempe Authority. Our efforts included painting a pride crosswalk at 6th and Mill, flying a special Tempe pride flag, and celebrating our LGBTQ community. We received hundreds of hateful and threatening messages. Someone even had the audacity to burn the pride flag that flew over Tempe City Hall. I'll tell you this about Tempe, though. We had the party anyway. <laughs> and hundreds of people attended. Because like Dr. King always said, darkness doesn't drive away darkness. Only light can do that. Hate doesn't drive away hate. Only love can do that. And in Tempe, we celebrate, respect, and protect our diverse communities and businesses. We do not tolerate hate, and we stand up for the people and businesses who champion inclusion. Racism is a reality that so many people deal with every day of their lives. But if we ever hope to end that, it's up to all of us in this room and all of us at home, black, white, indigenous, Asian, Hispanic, gay, straight, trans, all of us, to do the honest, uncomfortable work of rooting out racism, sexism, ageism, homophobia, all the isms, and find ways to move forward together, equally and honestly. Empathy means to share the feelings of another person, but empathy requires more than just simply feelings. It needs action. It's a sign of hope that compassion leading to action will create real change. That is what every single one of the steps we take in our community leads to, the hope for a more inclusive, more welcoming city. The city of Tempe passed the Crown Act two years ago to ban discrimination against people with natural hair. But I'll tell you right now, it's not enough to just simply change our anti-discrimination ordinance. This year, we are working with the HRC to provide materials to ensure that everyone knows that it's not okay to be passed over for a job, a scholarship, or a promotion because of your natural hair. We have created materials to help people understand what the Crown Act is, and also to teach them to how to report violations. We hope that our corporate partners will take some of the posters and flyers for their offices too. There are also materials to help identify, prevent, and report hate crimes. I am committed, the city council is committed, and the entire city of Tempe is committed to advancing and advocating for a community of kindness, compassion, and understanding for everyone. Our love for our community, our whole community, is what motivates us to do the delicate and difficult work of leading all of us together to build a better, 
stronger, and more equitable Tempe. Thank you. But now what I'm really here to do is to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Kenja Hassan. Dr. Hassan is the Assistant Vice President of Government and Community Engagement at Arizona State University. Her work is to forge partnerships and relationships between ASU and diverse communities throughout the state of Arizona. Dr. Hassan has brought college preparation programs to American Indian youth on reservations, orchestrated national dialogues on pressing issues in the nation's capital, guided student service projects across Arizona, and launched a series of reports on the status of Arizona's diverse communities, including the state of black Arizona, which went on to thrive as an independent community-based nonprofit. She is currently a liaison to African and Asian American communities and to civic leadership organizations representing the interests of minority populations. So with no further ado, I bring to the stage here my good friend, our keynote speaker, Dr. Kenja Hassan. Uh, thank you, Mayor Woods. Thank you to the Tempe Human Relations Commission and to the Diversity Office, um, Elena, Valista, and all the others. I know you did a tremendous amount of work to make this happen. And to the award recipients, you exemplify today's theme. For you heard a calling, and you didn't wait for someone else to answer it. Lisa Groom, I see you over there working. Thank you for all the things that you have done to make your city move in a better direction. So the city of Tempe holds a special place in my heart. I lived here in the late 90s for six years, enveloped by the cool air of flood-irrigated Mitchell Park East. I could walk to Casey Moore's for an oyster. I could walk to Lalibela's for Ethiopian injera. I took full advantage of your amenities, Tempe. I took my first salsa lessons at the Pyle Recreation Center. I took my first pottery class at Edna Veal Art Center. If you're not using those amenities, please do, because they're fantastic. I enjoyed my first taste of pho ever at Kai Huan Vietnamese down the street from Haji Baba's, where I ate many a Mediterranean platter. I had my first sip of craft beer at the newly opened Four Peaks Brewery back in the day, yes. They still produce my personal favorite beer, a brew so dark and strong they call it Sirius Black. <laughs> yeah. Named for the star Sirius, not the adjective Sirius, but I am a woman who is serious about her beer, and I am serious about my blackness. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, it is that seriousness with which I approach understanding the history of my people wherever they are, and how I start to understand Dr. King's impact in Tempe, a, a place so far from the burgeoning black metropolises of Atlanta and Washington, D.C. So it starts with me acknowledging that the privileged life I enjoyed in Tempe, the freedom to walk to campus any time, day or night, and navigate the city without fear was a freedom that had been denied to black students just a couple generations before me. It starts with me understanding that my pleasant life in Tempe results from the work of prior generations to uplift people of color and to make sure that they could live and enjoy the city the way everyone else did. That work accelerated in and around the pivotal year of 1964. Your friend, Michelle Brooks Tatris, told me that Tempe was more like a sundown town back in the day. Indeed, Tempe historian Jared Smith and your living legend, Fred Warren, with, five of, with three of his five degrees from ASU, go devils, they both agreed that this was the case. Black people simply knew where they could and could not be and most of that was in the city of Tempe, incorporated after dark. Racial covenants prevented the sale or occupation by homes of people of color. These written agreements, and I got one with my house when I bought it in Phoenix, 
These written agreements with buyers and sellers were enforced by social custom, professional pressure, elsewhere in the country by jail and, and fines, actually. But people involved in the sale of property agreed never to pass or even allow to reside any non-Caucasian person except as a domestic servant. And I quote, and this is from one of the deeds, the restrictions in the next clauses intend to include every person who or whose spouse is of any other race, of any other race than the Caucasian race, and particularly to exclude every person of Mexican, Japanese, Chinese, Negro, Indian, either Oriental or American, blood. It continues with me digging deep enough to see that the veins of separateness run deep in Arizona like a good vein of copper. From the state's mining towns designated as white man's camps, to segregated housing for black cotton pickers fleeing, well, supposedly immigrating, but fleeing from southeastern states. Those veins widened when the geographic southern half of our great state, Arizona Territory, seceded from New Mexico Territory and the Union in order to become part of the Confederate Congress in 1861. So while our state's time in the Confederacy was short-lived, the spirit of segregation remained. That seeped into the ranks of Tempe's influential movers and shakers of the late 19th century, like E.W. Hudson, Hugh Laird, Harvey Harrelson. These were important farmers, business owners, home builders, and also members of the KKK. The covenant I quoted a minute ago was in the deed to a home being sold by Hudson, who sold many properties throughout Tempe and witnessed by Harrelson, who was the notary public. So if these names sound familiar, they are the ones that the city of Tempe worked to to change and to change the schools and um, houses, I'm sorry, schools and parks, honoring them to people that reflect your contemporary ethos. But then and now, Arizona's small black population had its intrepid ones. There was a black couple who owned a barber shop on Mill. There was a family that owned property in and around the city of Tempe. And this was in the late 1800s to the mid 1900s. But that's about it, seriously. Those racial covenants did their job. They prevented black home ownership until major home developer Hallcraft Homes would sell to black people. And this was in the late 1960s, and it was highly accomplished people like your living legends, Judge Cecil and Dr. Wilma Patterson, who could afford such homes. So when King spoke here, he disparaged such segregation, and he said what Mayor Woods just said, we must learn to live together as brothers or we will perish together as fools. Now my friend and yours, Ravine Aurora, who established the Indian Plaza and the sumptuous Dabo restaurant on Apache, reminded me that King learned this truism from King's political muse, Mohandas Gandhi. From the ancient Indian tradition of ahimsa, nonviolence, Dr. King and his close associates developed the principles of nonviolent protest that formed the cornerstone of the American Civil Rights Movement. Modeling after the Indian Movement for Independence, protesters were selected for their patience and trained to endure physical, emotional, and psychological abuse without retaliation, which they did, like our beloved former Congressman John Lewis, who passed away in the last couple of years. But nonviolence isn't just about outward, visible forms of protest. And the vision that Dr. King had for a beloved community is not just a utopian ideal. In fact, King's vision of a beloved community, which is described as a vision in which hunger, poverty, homelessness will not be tolerated because the standards of human decency will not allow it, the beloved community is a, wor is a world in which love and trust will triumph over fear and hate. Now, public protests are a mean to bring attention to injustice, 
But individuals do not create a beloved community with smiles and handshakes alone. They create it through the meticulous effort of formulating transformative policy that attack the edifices of inequality. In fact, Dr. King's third principle of nonviolence is to attack the forces of evil, not persons doing evil. So in 1964, when he spoke here in Tempe at Arizona State University, right up the street from you guys, he spoke of attacking housing discrimination, lack of employment, and educational inequality. So six decades later, you here in Tempe are working towards this vision. As your mayor just stated, you are creating affordable housing. You are offering early childhood education options. You are offering grants to entrepreneurs. You are placing interns in businesses. Your Care and Hope Hotline for People in Distress helped 1,000 people find a path to housing last year. This is an expression of Kingian, King, Kingian dignity in action. Give yourselves an applause for that. So in King's book, Why We Can't Wait, he wrote, our nation was born in genocide when it embraced the doctrine that the original Americans, the Indian, was an inferior race. We are perhaps the only nation which, as a matter of national policy, tried to wipe out its indigenous people. Moreover, he said, we elevated that tragic experience into a noble crusade. Our literature, our film, our drama, our folklore, all exalted it. So in an effort to help us face our past and learn from it, your city adopted Indigenous Peoples Day as a paid holiday. Yeah. And if you at all are ever in doubt of the significance of land stewardship of our indigenous people in Arizona, you need only look to the canals that move water through our city. With a 1,000 miles of hand-dug hand canals, their ancestors showed us that this valley could be fertile. By adopting green building codes, you are moving toward seven generations thinking. That is the widespread decision-making practice among Native nations that considers the impact of the current decisions on seven generations after the present. But embracing nonviolence requires compassion for self. To an audience of teens at a junior high school in Philadelphia, Dr. King told those kids they must have a, a, a sense of somebodiness. That's right, somebodiness. Never be ashamed of your biological features, he told them. You need not be lulled into purchasing cosmetics to make your skin lighter. Neither do you need to process your hair to make it straight. So it is one thing for black kids with kinky hair to embrace it as their own, as I chose to do. But it is an entirely different thing to make an employer or an educator accept that here. So when you pass the Crown Act, a lot of people will write this off as a simplistic and sim symbolic gesture. But when one's career progression or education can be entirely derailed by how their hair goes out of their head, protection for a hairstyle is no trivial matter. So y'all saw in my photograph that I normally wear my hair in an afro, that, that little big wad of hair. Let me tell you, it takes about four hours and a couple hundred dollars to transition from that to this, and this is temporary, right? <laughs> and ASU likes me a whole lot, but they are not creating a hair allowance anytime soon. <laughs> So for all the people with hair that's kind of kinky, curly, tight, and coiled, and they go through a lot of trouble just to fit in with all the rest of the people here. So that is a big, important deal. Yes, Tempe, in the last 60 years, you have moved from sundown town to hometown for all. But certain national conditions made this trajectory possible, and they were accelerated by the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. The movement did not merely open up opportunities for African Americans. 
And understanding the struggles of black people opened up Dr. King's heart to others. He saw the plight of marginalized people around the world, and the culmination of his life's work was the Poor People's Campaign. King's focus on agape, redemptive goodwill toward all mankind, that love that transcends divisions and peers deep into the divinity of all human beings, inspired so many others. It inspired people to take up their own case for their own freedom, and it softened the hearts of our elected officials to pass laws that made us a more embracing nation. So if the AV team, if you wouldn't mind bringing up that photo of your council again, so when I was a little kid, I believed fully with all my heart that an image like this is what was meant by we the people. Mm -hmm. But as an adult, I have come to learn that the full embrace of people who are different from us as neighbors, as coworkers, as elected officials in positions of leadership is not a normal human inclination. We incline to separation, division, suspicion of the unfamiliar. It took immense courage and significant political capital to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964. That act ended the legal ability to discriminate on the basis of color, religion, sex, national origin, all of the things that human beings customarily use to separate us from one another. Now, after 1964, others began to speak up and step out. Asian Americans took on the case of immigration. Native Americans renewed their own vigor for their own self-determination. What followed was a cascade of legislation rolling down in a mighty stream of righteousness. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 to protect access to the ballot for minority groups across the nation. Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 opened our doors to Asia and other parts of the globe previously excluded. Think about your international presence in Tempe and other East Valley cities. Think about all those delicious cuisines I mentioned earlier. Imagine a Tempe without that. The Indian Civil Rights Act of 1968, the Indian Self-Determination Act of 1975, the Indian Religions Freedom Act of 1978, all provided Native Americans, the first Americans, with rights already guaranteed to other US citizens. The Higher Education Act of 1972, also known as Title IX, extended ended sex-based discrimination in education programs. The Fair Housing Act of 1968 made all those racial covenants I mentioned earlier unenforceable. The Refugee Act of 1980 demonstrated that we were capable of true humanitarian embrace of people affected by war and political crises. The Americans with Disability Act of 1990, yes, it took us to 1990 to really recognize that we actually do discriminate against people with disabilities. We finally started to address that in 1990. The Equality Act, if enacted, would expand 1964 Civil Rights Act and other laws to protect the rights of LGBTQ plus people. So Dr. King was often confronted by people who argued that legislation would not change hearts. To that he said, while it may be true that a law cannot change the hearts of men, it does change the habits of men. And when you change the habits, pretty soon the hearts will be changed and the attitudes will be changed. Your city council with all of its representation, Caucasian and the once excluded Asian, African, Indigenous, Latino and LGBTQ is a living example of how our nation changed its attitude about who is important, who is valuable, who is trustworthy, and who is capable of leading. A change like this could not have occurred if the edifices of discrimination had been allowed to persist. So here we are in a moment whew, when the wisdom of the unparalleled progress in human cooperation that our nation made in the last 60 years is being questioned. 
Today our struggles have changed, yet they remain tinged with the struggles for human dignity of the past. Our state is faced with a long-term water, long-term heat, and immediate-term housing crisis. Arizona's unhoused population increased by 23% in 2022, while the national increase that year was only 1%. So the people now living in our streets and parks are caught in the crosshairs of a trifecta beyond their control. And they look like who? Just like us, just like your council. To make the next leap into the beloved community, we must approach them with the same level of dignity our ancestors yearned for. And I have faith that this can be done because the people of Arizona are capable of great triumphs giving women the right to vote with statehood, desegregating schools two years prior to the Supreme Court ruling of Brown, and becoming the only state to adopt the King holiday by a vote of the people. So King closed his speech 60 years ago by expressing his faith that we shall overcome because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Oh! <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, after everything we just read, went through and learned, we know that the arc does not bend without someone pulling on it. So, as this long weekend arrives, I encourage you, go enact your right to the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, go have fun. That's what the ancestors wanted, to you, for you to live your best life. So pick your poison. That could be a night out dancing on Friday, a night in with Netflix on Saturday. But on Monday, when Dr. King's Monday arrives, it is imperative that you pick your purpose, pick your passion, pick your position on the arc of the moral universe where you will pull in the direction of justice. You can clap. <laughs> I am certain that the bold Berdetta Hodge, where is she, will pull in the direction of equitable education I am very confident that the admirable Arlene Chin will pull in the direction of participatory governance. I trust that the courageous Corey Woods will continue the pull in the direction of affordable housing. So this story ends with, started with me and my life in Tempe, but it ends with us. What will your position be to pull us in the path toward justice? Thank you so much. So we will stand proud in the service of the public, in the service of Dr. Martin Luther King, and in service for one another. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Enjoy your January. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hassan, for your inspirational words. The MLK Diversity Awards were created by the Tempe Human Relations Commission to honor those individuals, organizations, and businesses in Tempe that have demonstrated a commitment to celebrating diversity and inclusion in Tempe. Today, we will present the 26th Annual Diversity Awards to individuals and groups in four different categories. Our first category today is individual adult. The first recipient in the individual adult category is Lori Dodd. <laughs> Lori Dodd is a math teacher at Tempe High School and is sponsor of the Peer Solutions Club on campus. Lori works hard to foster safe spaces for her students and has played a key role in recruiting and promoting the club on campus 
after the return to on-campus learning. She works daily to dismantle the normalization of violence on her campus and advocates for an end to various trends on campus. Lori actively recruits teachers and other staff to share peer solutions projects, messaging, and missions with their students to ensure a larger reach of the work. Please join us in congratulating Lori. Our next individual adult winner is Lisa Groom. Lisa Groom is a founding member and president of the Tempe Black Employee Alliance, TBEA, the first black employee group in the history of Arizona government. TBEA was founded upon connection, empowerment, and strengthening the relationships of employees with the goal of fostering inclusion. Lisa was also instrumental in ensuring the Juneteenth flag appeared throughout the city during the Juneteenth celebrations to encourage understanding and visibility of the holiday and the history. Lisa Groom's leadership and perseverance has inspired many within the city of Tempe. Please join us in congratulating Lisa. Our next category honors our individual youth. Our first awardee in the individual youth category is Robert Trujillo. Robert Trujillo has held the role of a peer leader through Peer Solutions Club for two years and has been a key part of the reestablishment and success of Peer Solutions. Robert grew quickly in his leadership role and made headways in connecting his use of technology to increase the impact of Peer Solutions both on and off campus. He has leveraged his influence to encourage connection within his community in the town of Guadalupe and our indigenous community members. Please join us in congratulating Robert. <laughs> our next award is the Community Organization category. This Community Organization Award belongs to Hook You. Hook You is a local indigenous artist continuum aiming to create accessibility and visibility for the Otham uh, Pipash Yoemi, and the many indigenous voices within the local landscape. Hukyu bridges an important gap in stakeholder collaboration by identifying principles of their work to thereby lower barriers of inclusion. The principles outlined include tangible and intangible outcomes through a multi-layer process to achieve mutual benefits between indigenous peoples and supporting stakeholders. By actively seeking partnerships with other organizations and municipalities, the group employs a collaborative approach that extends the spirit of inclusion beyond the group itself and into the broader community. Please join us in congratulating Hook You. Our final MLK Diversity Award category is Business Organization. This award recipient is Tanya B. Holloway, cut to a T. <laughs> Tanya Holloway is a local business owner who has exemplified Dr. King's spirit through inclusion, access, and persistence. Ms. Ms. Holloway has shown exemplary service to all who enter her shop, cut to a T, yeah. by adapting to the needs of her community and going above and beyond to make all feel welcome. Cut to a T is not just a place you stop by, but a place of gathering and belonging for every member of the community. Please join me in congratulating cut to a T. 
Now, one final congratu congratulation to all of our 2024 MLK Diversity Award winners. As we conclude this morning's celebration, we would like to thank each and every one of you for being here today and showing your dedication to this work. Your presence is in itself a demonstration of your commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion in our city. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mayor Corey Woods, the City of Tempe, the Human Relations Commission, for bringing us together to celebrate and reflect on Dr. King's tremendous legacy. Over five decades later, Dr. King's life work continues to guide us as a North Star in the fight for racial, economic, and social justice. And it's essential that we take the time each year to recognize Dr. King's leadership and its enduring reminder of the responsibilities we have towards each other, to fight for what is right, and to ensure that the arc of history bends towards justice. Because of the leadership of, of the people gathered in this room, our community will continue to make progress and ensure Dr. King's legacy stands the test of time. Every year, the Tempe Diversity Awards highlight individuals, community groups, and business organizations doing extraordinary work within this community. And this year's awardees are no exception. The city of Tempe has done a wonderful job in showcasing and fostering these leaders throughout the years to make this incredible city what it is today, inclusive, innovative, and committed to a higher quality of life for all. First, I want to congratulate Robert Trujillo, today's youngest awardee. Robert, a senior in high school, has worked tirelessly as a peer leader and through the Peer Solutions Program in the town of Guadalupe and among Indigenous community members. Lori Dad another recipient of this year's Diversity Awards, has also been instrumental in implementing the mission of Peer Solutions as Tempe High School's club sponsor. Next up, of course, congratulations to Lisa Groom. She is the founding member and president of the Tempe Black Employee Alliance, and this year's business awardee is Cut to AT, owned by Tanya B. Holloway, creating a warm, welcoming place in our community. And finally, congratulations to Hukyo, this year's community group awardee. Hukyo works to create visibility and accessibility for indigenous artists. It's remarkable to see such wonderful efforts of leadership happening right here in Tempe. So thank you to all the recipients for the work you, you are doing to make our community a better place for all. And I wish you a meaningful celebration and I'm confident your efforts will continue to lift up and empower our community for generations to come. Have a great day.